This humble servant will be diverted from you no more. No Take a look at my past and what I was faced with. No more. The duality of me. Muhammad Tamo, part two. Okay, where should we pick up from? Mm. Oh yeah, after high school, finding my path was troublesome. It was based off the decisions I made, and which led me to certain circumstances. These juvenile times were forcing the grip on my faith, my religion, to fade and slip away. Well, a long time had passed since then. And most of what I was going by. But I guess those impulsive times didn't completely part me from my faith. Because basically, I wouldn't be here. It's Friday. And another Juma prayer in the books. Some loose change drops at the bottom of the donations box as I walk by. Not all is lost. I'm still attending the masjid out of respect. But anticipation of what's going to happen tonight is quickly on my mind. I turn the ringer back on. And I met with a message from a friend. What's up, Mo? I said, what's up back? What's going on? Thinking I should feel more contradicted making plans while just leaving the mosque. But I continue. And Satan is pleased with this decision. I'll stop for Allah. And for what it's worth, another night goes by. And the weekend does as well. It's a blur, really. And I barely remember it. And on a Monday morning, the glorified fast lane comes to a halt. A screeching one. And the memories of what happened are only survived by what I see on the social media feed, basically. But now, I gotta look presentable for my job. It's a sales job. So I make my usual way to the furniture department. Yeah, you know, it's whatever. But the day was different. It was knocked off its regular course with a discussion about Islam. We had a lot of different cultures in our sales staff. But this convo was by my manager, whose origins are from a place that was quite religious. But also, that's the reason some two sides fight needlessly, because of different ideologies. And he then went on to reveal that he's not been following his faith as he once was because of it. Which shocked me. I felt the jolt of frustration and awareness because the society was doing opposite of what it's supposed to be doing. And also, why was he being so negligent? A man I respect, but now is trying to make me believe just because what's going on back home, what I should believe faith should be. And that I did not agree with. I asked Allah for guidance and worried for him as a brother. But I felt that thing, that feeling, the thing most guarded by me. But then a call on the intercom was made and the conversation between us dispersed. But this thought, this thought, it hovered around my mind for a bit. And on another day, on another night, with a bunch of friends where jokes were made and feelings usually get hurt, I'm not gonna lie, but they soon recover. So we usually joke and whatever we say kind of rolls off each other's back. It's a free for all. But one, one went too far. It was made about my faith. And I never thought it was cool to talk about somebody's faith in a disrespectful manner even though at the time I wasn't as vocal about mine. I refrained from lashing out because basically we're good friends. So I didn't let this one ruin our friendship. But I became a little bit more cautious about who I'm surrounding myself with. Under the cover of a slight smirk, I shrugged it off, but I didn't let it bother me. And on another night, on another day, walking alone from a night out, which usually turns into some contemplation of my situation. The Mo in me, well, you see, he'd become master of my regular affairs, like my weekly routines, and usually dashing aside all my Islamic responsibilities for more pleasurable situations. And Muhammad, basically my conscience, was in charge of the Ramadans, the Friday prayers, the Jumas, the charitable acts. Other than that, I stuck to the path that I shouldn't have been on. And I erected a wall to make all these things seem okay. But eventually, numerous nights out, still bold, no answer. So Muhammad was starting to fight back. Because no matter how many times I went out, 
I still returned with an empty feeling. Giving way to the equation, more zeros does not make zero a larger number. And then, on one of those nights, I don't know which one, but on one of them, I looked at the flickering light in the encompassing dark as the cold air revealed my breath and the heartbreak I felt when I remembered the opposition to all these empty scenes. My Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that which I've always kept near, that which I've been most secretive about, that which I realize has always been there for me. Since the time of me trying to explain why we don't eat pork as a Muslim. No, I'm good. I don't eat pork, man. Why? Are you allergic? No, man, I'm Muslim. We don't eat pork. At the old lunch table, back in high school, my faith, my deed, the navigator, when I am lost, Al-Rahman. And a while later, a decision to be a little bit more conscious about my Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes over me. Not sure if my friends will even know what this is about, but the wall I built slowly gets taken down brick by brick. Thus is Islam. I was no longer blinded by the assumptions of what my faith was about. And the doors swing open. The doors of Islam. The doors of the Ummah. The doors of guidance. And it feeds me with knowledge of good and bad, right and wrong. Even though the odor of my wild ways still emits from my clothes. I am accepted. It's a revival. It's funny, <laughs> I always thought these awakening type moments were reserved for ex-prisoners or something like that, or hippies. <laughs> Not for the streetwise dudes in the back of the club. And sometime after, there was a blue turquoise praying man just sitting there, staring at me. And I don't know where it came from or how I had it. It must have been passed down in the family, but I grabbed it flicked it in the air, and let it land softly, clearing the wrinkles as I step on it, raised my palms to my head, and prayed my daily prayer. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Surah 43, verse 43, 44. Azukruf, the gold adornments. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So hold thou fast to the revelation sent down to thee. Verily, thou art on a straight way. The Quran is indeed the message for thee and for thy people. And soon shall ye all be brought to account. Alhamdulillah. And at another job, at another day, a co-worker asked me, what do you want to be called, Muhammad or Mo? I thought for a second, letting all that has transpired flash before me. And now finally gaining a new stance in who I am and who I'm named after. I said no. Call me Muhammad. Oh, no. Here I am. This is love. Please like, subscribe, and share.